and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, May 18th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Uh, currently, we've got futures that are pointing a little bit higher uh, following up on yesterday's gains. Uh, Dow Jones futures up 17, S&P 500 futures up eight and a half, NASDAQ futures up 35.75. NASDAQ's going to be one to watch uh, because the NASDAQ 100 finished right at the August 2022 highs. With futures higher this morning, it looks like we are going to open up above key resistance. Uh, that would be a very good uh, win for the bulls, at least in the near term. Uh, I believe we're going a lot higher, but I've been talking about that. And uh, we'll look at some interesting charts later in the show. Um, first, let's go through the agenda for today before we get into any of that. Going to start off with the uh, daily market recap. Then we'll jump into talking technically. Chart of the day um, related to the NASDAQ. Give you a little hint there. Um, strong industry groups. And then earnings spotlight. And we'll wrap up with the three you must see. Focus a little bit on gaps in the three you must see. So you want to stick around for that. Um, also, do want to mention that we are having our portfolio draft today at 5.30 for our members. Um, I'll give you an opportunity. I'll show you uh, at our website how you can sign up for that in just a little bit. Um, but I do want to let you know we put together three portfolios. Um, our two aggressive portfolios, actually our model portfolio and our aggressive portfolio, both have outperformed the S&P 500 substantially since their inceptions. And uh, I'm going to be providing the charts, the 10 equal weighted stocks that will go into each of our portfolios. That'll again happen later today at 5.30. Um, so uh, I know uh, this is a big event for our members. And if you haven't been part of Earnings Beats, we would uh, love to have you. Um, again, this is a big event. And given what's taken place in the market, uh, you really want to pay attention to what's working right now. So got some great stocks that we will be uh, delivering um, at 530 later today. Looking at what happened yesterday. So let's go ahead and jump into the daily market recap. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 409 points back to 33,420, just below the 20 day moving average. So we got a little bit of a hurdle there. It looks like with slightly higher futures, maybe. We will uh, move up and challenge and hopefully clear that 20-day moving average. S&P 500 up 49 points, 4159. Remember, the number is 4179. That's the number we need to clear to get through the recent highs. A lot of consolidation, a uh, lot of noise right here in about the 4150 to 4180 area um, going back. And I'm just looking back these last four months. Um, so got to get that breakout. Do we get it? Could happen today. Um, certainly be interesting to see. This would be a crazy time, by the way, <clears throat> for the market to actually break out. Why? Because it's option expiration week and there's already a ton of in the money call premium. So honestly, as bullish as I've been, this is a week where I thought, okay, we're going to probably pause, maybe pull back a little bit. And then, boom, yesterday, the market takes off. Um, bull markets don't care. And uh, I, I like anybody who says this isn't a bull market. I mean, if you look back, I don't know, what we're, we're up 30% now on the NASDAQ um, since October, since the October low. I mean, 30%. Any other time, 20% is considered a bull market. I don't know why 30% wouldn't. But anyway... Uh, yeah, we've had a strong run here. I think the market is poised to continue going higher throughout the year. But short term, we do have to deal with options expiration. Mid caps and small caps. One thing that I've been pointing out is even though mid caps have been going down, small caps have been going down, money has been rotating within those asset classes from value into growth, which has been really strange because the market's been going up. The key moving or the key uh, indices like the NASDAQ, the S&P sitting right on the edge of a breakout, and yet mid-cap, small-cap's been going down. And that's been all the talk. Oh, but small-caps aren't performing well. Mid-caps aren't performing well. 
And that's been true. Can't argue it. I mean, look at the last four months. It's been horrible. But not too many folks are talking about the massive um, rotation that's been taking place in those two asset classes away from value and into growth. And that tells me one thing that's probably going to happen, which is these groups are going higher. I think they're going higher. We're going to see. Uh, anyway, looking at the uh, sectors, we had discretionary leading the way yesterday, up 2%. Big breakout there, by the way. I think this is going to be a group that's going to be very strong over the next 90 days. I think discretionary could be your leading sector for the next 90 days. That's my opinion. Financials up 2%, energy up 2%. Notice, you know, both of these are um, value, more va value oriented. And I think some of that has to do with it being what I call opposite George week. These are the two worst performers as far as scooter scores go among the 11 major sectors. And yet these two are in, among the leaders yesterday. That could continue short term. Industrials also had a nice day, another more value oriented area. Um, they were up 1.7%. The only stock down yesterday was, or the only sector down yesterday was utilities. And that fell about one third of 1%. 10 year treasury yield. So uh, this morning, we're going to get a few economic reports, initial jobless claims. Of course, that's out every Thursday morning. We have been seeing initial jobless claims going up, 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 which is good, I think, as far as what the Fed wants to see. Um, last week, initial jobless claims were at 264,000. They're anticipated to drop to 255,000. I'll be surprised if they do because we have been going steadily higher. Um, don't see a drop coming, but who knows? Uh, by the time you listen to this recording, you can go and check it out and see what we have. But just know that it wasn't that long ago, initial jobless claims were coming in under 200,000. Last week, 264,000. It's telling us that our labor market is, uh, you know, maybe moving in the wrong direction. Well, it depends on how you look at it. Again, from a bullish stock market perspective, you actually want to see this to a degree. You want to see the market, the economy cooling off a little bit because that will keep the Fed from raising rates any further, in addition to some a lot of other data that they follow. But we want a little bit of a pullback and a little bit of an unwinding of that continuous drop in the initial jobless claims. So that's one to keep an eye out for today. Also the May Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. April was minus 31.3, which is a horrible number. It is expected to improve, but still expected to come in at minus 20. And then uh, finally, April existing home sales. March was 4,440,000 units. We're expecting that to drop to 4,295,000 units. So those are your key economic reports coming out today. Let's move on to talking technically, S&P 500. So there's that 4179 test. Over here was the high close, 4179. Now, if we break above this, you know, that's good news for now. Still, we got the big one from August uh, down the road at 4305. So from 40, 4179 to 4305, you got another 126 points which is roughly another 3% to go on the S&P 500 after you make the breakout. Now, when we look at the NASDAQ, a little different story here. Said that, you know, I've said in the last couple of days, it would only take, you know, maybe one or two good days to get up to test the 13,667 level on the NASDAQ 100. That was the high close back in August, 13,667. Yesterday's high, 13,608. We're on the doorstep. One more big day, and August high is behind us. Now, again, this is a big resistance level. I would expect that we would get a pullback. I would not expect that we're going to go straight through because it is such a big level, and everybody sees it. So many traders are going to be selling at this level. It's option expiration week. A lot of in-the-money call premium. There's a lot of reasons why the NDX should not see this breakout. And that's why it would be more meaningful if it does. But let's see. We'll see if we get through. Um, moving on to the chart of the day, I do want to <clears throat> just remind everyone, as I said at the beginning, we do have our... Um, 
portfolio draft. I like to call our draft. I mean, if you think about it, think about NFL teams when they put together their teams. They, you know, they go through the draft, but there are 32 teams. So if you pick first, you don't pick again until 33rd. And then you don't pick again until 65th. In the stock market, we can choose whatever we want. We got the first 10, you know, if you put together a portfolio of 10 stocks, we got the first 10 lottery picks. Shouldn't we be able to outperform the S&P 500? You can pick anything you want. You know, if somebody else picks Apple, it doesn't mean you can't pick Apple. You can still pick Apple. So I always refer to it as our draft because we have all the draft picks. And three or four times a year, every three months, we go through this exercise where we replace the old with the new, continually looking at what the market's doing, looking at the themes, trying to follow those themes and put together a portfolio that would benefit from those themes. That's the whole idea. And I don't think it's any coincidence that, that over time, we've done really well versus the S&P 500. Anyhow, if you want to be at that event where I unveil, unve unveil the uh, 10 equal weighted stocks in each of our three portfolios, you can start a no-cost 30-day trial. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, also, starting today, it is now Thursday, so we'll be updating this today, but our spring special starts today. Tremendous deal. Um, check that out. If, you're, if you come on board as a trial member, you'll have 30 days, but the spring special lasts maybe about 10. So if you really like the service, take us up on the spring special. It'll get added to the end of your trial period. So it's not like you're going to lose the rest of your trial. It, anything you extend would be added to the end of your 30-day trial. So please check that out. Also, if you're new to Earnings Beats, you're just stumbling upon us, you want to check us out, see some of the things that we do, how we approach the market. Listening to these shows is obviously one great way. Following my articles over at Stock Charts would be another way. A third way, we have a free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. It's the quickest of all, two paragraphs in a chart, three times a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll give you two paragraphs in a chart. Um, usually focusing on earnings, relative strength, a lot of the things that are important to us. But sometimes it's big picture things. Why I think the market's going higher. It could be a you know, growth versus value chart. It could be something on sentiment. I do that every once in a while. So check that out. Lots of value in a free newsletter. Um, so be sure to make sure you're on that. Also, when we do our free events, anybody who's on Earnings Beats Digest in that community will receive an invitation to join us for our free events. All right, moving on, chart of the day. So for today, I want to show you the QQQ. Um, if you look, if you hit this little inspect button up here and check, back in August, on August 15th, the high close was 30, or excuse me, 331.16, 331.16. Yesterday's close, 331.12. And the high was 331.71. We had the breakout intraday, came back down, closed below. Now with futures up this morning, maybe we're gonna get that breakout today, maybe it'll stick, or maybe we'll get a reversing candle. Beware if we get a reversing candle because the next few days, I would say the next three to five days could be trouble in the short term if we fail on this breakout. That's just what I would normally expect in technical analysis. You know, same thing, you know, when you come down here, we had never had a close below 260. So when you get down to 260, you expect to bounce. You get down to 260, you expect to bounce. Well, now we're up against key resistance. So normally I would expect a pullback. This is a big level. So definitely worthy of the chart of the day. Do we get the breakout? Do options, do the options expiration have an impact? Do we see a pullback here in the near term? It's gonna be a really interesting couple of days to a week looking at this QQQ chart. All right, um, let's see, moving on. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the industry groups and I wanted to start first with the sector summary. Because I said, I think consumer discretionary is going to be very strong over the next three months. It was leading yesterday. Uh, I'll show you a chart here in just a minute. XLY versus the XLP. Looks like it's finally turning back up again. 
starting to show some strength. I think that's important. Um, but that was leading. The other thing I wanted to show you is because I always talk about this being opposite George week, whatever what hasn't been working all of a sudden starts to work. What has been working tends to take a back seat as we go through options expiration and into a couple of days following options expiration. Look at the scooters right here. The two lowest financials and energy and their numbers two and three in terms of performance yesterday. All of a sudden, banks lit up. Well, everyone's been riding puts into the ground on banks. So I'm not surprised to see banks recover. I, I won't be surprised if we continue to see it. On Tuesday, <clears throat> we gave out our max pain candidates, the stocks that we thought could go in a certain direction. Well, with the market so strong yesterday, any of the short candidates we talked about struggled to go down. They actually did fairly well, which doesn't mean anything except they're probably riskier today than they were yesterday. But I want you to look at the KRE because the KRE was beaten up. And this was the one that we said had potentially 8% upside or 7% upside. KRE yesterday, up 7%. That was Tuesday's discussion. And then the very next day, we gained 7%. So when we do get the rally and we get these beaten down groups, the problem is there's so many in the money puts. And the best way to, or the only way really to get rid of all that value is for the KRE to rise. And there you can see it rising to the tune of 7.36%. I'm always amazed come option expiration time. Things not working, start to work. Things have been working, tend to fizzle. <clears throat> All right. Um, so kind of still on this industry group, sector, asset class kind of discussion. Let's look at the IWF, IWD. <clears throat> because here... You can, this is large cap growth versus large cap value. I mean, that August high is in the rear view mirror. We've made a huge run. Growth stocks are crushing value. If you're not paying attention to what's working, I mean, look since the beginning of May. I said May through August, the best four months of the year by far for growth stocks relative to value. And here we go on a roll so far in May, for sure, extending what we already saw. How about the QQQ versus the SPY? NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P 500. Same thing. Look at that money, the rotation. Better than we were in August. The last high in March, we got up right to that August high, pulled back, and when we got into May, here come the growth stocks. NASDAQ breaks out relative to the spider. How about... Um, <clears throat> XLY, XLP, this is one of my favorite ratios, and it's been struggling. But that trend line looks to me like it's been broken back to the upside. So I think consumer stocks are going to do well, but I think the discretionary is going to significantly outpace staples. Love this move. Look at that relative PPO. Just turned positive for the first time in over two months. And also... Don't have time to get into it today, but I've done a lot of research. A lot of this is due to gap downs in consumer discretionary stocks during this period. I do an intraday relative um, ratio on the XLY versus the XLP, and it doesn't look anything like this. It's been much stronger because during the day, that's when we get the rotation. That's when you can actually sell something and buy something else. The opening gap, that's just the number created by the market makers. Where are we going to where are we going to open the market? Where are we going to open discretionary? Where are we going to open technology? Where are we going to open utilities? These aggressive groups are the ones that get hit the hardest in the mornings. <clears throat> anyway, keep an eye on that. All right. So I want to now talk about some industry groups that have really been working in 2023. So I'm going to go through and just show you the top industry groups. And let's look at their absolute and relative charts. First, internet stocks. 
This is, if you're looking for the best performing group in 2023, this is it. Internet. So right here is where we were to start the year. Here's where we are now. Just this year, up 34%. <clears throat> That's pretty amazing, I think. 34%. I mean, I just, bears, what are you waiting for? I don't understand. These are the aggressive areas. They've been, I mean, there's been a buy signal pretty much since the middle part of January, in my opinion. Breaking back above the moving averages, breaking above the PPO. We've been there now for four months. What do you need to see? Just been going up almost every day. How about renewable energy? Now, most of this you can attribute to First Solar because some of the other big names in renewable energy are not performing this well. But First Solar has been on fire, FSLR. And so you can see where we were where we are now, we were, what, at 290 maybe to close out last year in the 290s. Now we're at 400. Big move on the renewable energy. How about one of my favorites? Semiconductors. Semiconductors, nice little cup right at resistance. This is like the QQQ. This is a big area of resistance. You would think we'd pull back here. Today will be a big day for the QQQ and for semiconductors. Applied Materials, by the way, reports after the bell tonight. That's a big semiconductor equipment manufacturer. So I don't know what we do today, but maybe Applied Materials report after the bell may determine whether or not we make this breakout or not. Another area. Got a big recession coming, huh? Isn't that what everybody's saying? One of the top five industry groups, travel and tourism. Wall Street's pouring resources into travel and tourism. We got this huge recession coming. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Wouldn't know it from this chart. Straight up to begin the year, all the way through mid-February. And now, consolidation. Mentioned when we were breaking above this area of resistance. Now we've pulled back to the 20 day. This is a group looks poised to go to me. Breakout above 720 would be your confirmation there. And then got to mention uh, the home of Apple, the uh, computer hardware group, another big move. They have not yet taken out August, getting close. 8,700 is the level there, sitting at 8,530. Need a couple percent, but Apple getting back fairly close to, not far from its all-time high, by the way, maybe $10 or less away. Going to be interesting. Anyway, those are some of the industry groups I think you need to be aware of, of what's been leading the market. Let's talk a little bit about earnings. Give you your earnings spotlight here. We'll just go over a few stocks. Uh, first up is Cisco. And what I'll do is I'll just get you a refresh here to see where we are this morning. Cisco beat. A dollar versus 97 cents, but it is down 4%, down $1.88 or $1.88. Um, and on the chart, Cisco looked like it was moving back up. Now it's going to be back down challenging these recent lows. 45.75, I'm going to say 45, watch that level, it really needs to hold. Next up, SNPS, they reported this is synopsis. Yesterday's stock up $8. Moving back up near its recent high here in pre-market. Um, Boot Barn. This is uh, one in the consumer discretionary area. Noticed it was getting hit pretty hard. They beat. I didn't see whether they warned, but they beat on the last quarter. Buck 53 versus a buck 45. Stocks down 11%. Big ones out this morning, though. Wanted to make sure you saw Walmart. Walmart, 147 versus 132. That was the earnings. Easy beat. And they are up 1.5%, 151.78. Still in this little trading range between about 
I would even go back to 147 and a half area up to about 154. That's the trading range I would watch for now. Let's see which way Walmart breaks. Alibaba reported this morning up nearly 3%. They beat buck 56 versus a buck 30. Another good earnings report there. Um, but one smaller company I wanted to take a look at was BBWI, which is Bath and Body Works, up 11% this morning. Another beat there, 33 cents versus 26. Really good action. All right, the three you must see. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Start off with Intel. Semis are on fire, right? <clears throat> Intel, I actually wrote an article when we got this breakout. I said, is Intel going to be our new leader? Well, I think we've gotten the answer. Semiconductors keep flying, Intel doing nothing. Not good there. Uh, TAP, which is Core or uh, Molson Core's brewing, gapped up here. I believe that was earnings related. We're now back into this gap support zone, testing the 20 day. This is an area we may see TAP move back up again. I like that one. And then finally, gap support. Is it going to hold here for Illumina? Big move up. We've come all the way back down to where we gapped up to with that big volume spike. Do we hold? We need to hold right here on Illumina. All right, that's it for me. Again, come join us over at Earnings Beats. Would love to have you for this evening's event. Go over to earningsbeats.com and simply um, sign up with the 30-day uh, no-cost trial and check out our spring special. Love to have you. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. 